What's up guys? I figured I would show y'all how to tie oh, one of my one of my go-to redfish flies. So I don't have a name for this. I think I'm gonna call it uh, the special moment. I like that name. And I think it uh, it's had a lot of special moments in my life. So here we are. And uh, what you're gonna need is some EP brush and uh, some of your favorite colors. I'm gonna use chartreuse, kind of like a, a brownish tan and then a light tan. And then uh, tan marabou. So first off, I'm gonna wrap my thread about a quarter of the way back, build up a little bit of thread base here. There we go. I'm gonna use bead chain eyes for this fly. And we're gonna go with any color works great, but I'm gonna go with some matte black. Cut these eyes off here. There we go. Wrap these in so they don't come off. I've been using super glue a lot of times. I've also sometimes will use my, my UV cure on these eyes just to lock them in a little bit better on top of some super glue. The whole idea of this fly is to be able to fish it real shallow, real quiet when it lands in the water and it's resembling, it's not a super realistic fly by any means, but it's just kind of resembling the size and shape of a little grass shrimp along the bank for these low tide belly crawling fish. There we go. Come back through one more time since I got some sloppy bits in there from that thread breaking all right so next you want to pick a nice piece of marabou i've got some of this uh superfly marabou here which has worked really nice i'm gonna pull a piece of marabou out of here let's see this piece might work there we go so you don't need a big old fat piece this is it right here. You're gonna, you wanna tie it in so you can see how it's got this angle here and here. So you want that to be the, the left and right side of the fly here. So it's gonna come across and lay like that. But I don't use this whole piece of marabou. What I do is I kind of work it down, find a spot. And, and you can tie a nice long fly, but I, you don't need it. There we go. So I'll kind of put this here. lift up back here too and get a wrap under that and then back on top and I'll pop that out and kind of make sure I got the that feather in there that marabou in there nicely and it kind of splits across the hook pretty evenly like that and I'll clip it back in and now you're just pretty much EP brushing the rest of the fly so you got that cool little marabou tail it's got a lot of movement and a brushed head for the most part. So I'm gonna use a darker, this darker uh, brush here for the base, just to get a little contrast from that marabou. Tie that in here. Like I said, super simple fly, but it works really, really well for our shallow redfish here in North Carolina. Getting about I'm packing these wraps really tight. I don't want to uh, travel too far because I'm going to put two more colors on here. About three or four wraps. Whenever you start to kind of get a good base that's going to cover that transition to the marabou. back all the way to the base pull that back pull this tight get a wrap in here I like to get about three or four wraps in here just to make sure it's nice 
nice and tight. I'll trim off that tag. I keep one of these in here, you know what this is? Cut a hairbrush. I'll brush these fibers out. Next, we're gonna rock some chartreuse in there. So, gonna come right back to the back again, find that little wire point in this brush, and then wrap it in. Sweet. I like to pull these fibers back like this as I'm wrapping it, so you're really controlling a lot more. You got a lot less mess to deal with. You don't have them all piled up on top of each other. Especially when they I'm just constantly pulling them towards the back of the hook, especially when they start to stick up like that. Grabbing it, pulling it back. That way you're not wasting, you're getting some body out of every one of these hairs. Can be tight, I travel a little far there. last little light colored piece that's going to tie the back end in there nicely and then we'll put a little weed guard in a little 40 pound mono weed guard is super important the nice thing about putting a good weed guard on this a lot of times i don't need it when i'm fishing shallow but if i want to take this same fly and throw it in the grass for tailing redfish it works because i got a nice weed guard i don't like none of that little one strand of 40 sticking up it doesn't do anything you really need Two pieces of forty kicking back. Just packing in behind this eye here, get a nice full look. Still pulling material back like I was saying. I'm gonna finish with that right there. So I'm gonna pull it forward. Still got my thread down here. Kind of pull it back and see it in there. Again, don't pull too hard, don't break your thread. If you do, it's not a huge deal because this wire will kind of hold its position. Come back in there. Trim that off. Grab my handy dandy brush again. Brush everything out. I'm gonna trim these hairs back too. I don't like them too full and I definitely don't like them on the bottom of the hook. Make sure that it's gonna sink hook up. Every fly tie, I'm trying to tie it so that it will sink with the hook up for these redfish. You're gonna have a better hookup ratio and you're gonna snag a lot less. So fishing flies in shallow water that the hook rides down in is uh, just a waste of time. So this is a special moment here just before the weed guard goes in. I always tie it a little bit, tie the weed guard in longer than I need because you can definitely trim it back. So I like to bend it like that. I'll flip it over here and pull it into place. cross over each other you have a nice little weed guard and I like to epoxy finish this whole deal with the weed guard just because I'm not very good at tying them in and it helps keep it in there so I'm going to whip finish here That's it. It's 
special moment. I hope you can tie one of these flies and go have a special moment with it. Well guys, thanks for checking out that video. I hope that fly uh, is easy for y'all to tie up and you can get it out on the water and be successful with it. Send me some pictures if you catch any fish. And uh, This is my first fly tying video, so hopefully, I feel like I probably wasn't as uh, good at explaining all the steps um, as I should have been, so hopefully I'll be getting better at that. But there will definitely be more fly videos to come and top water uh, or lure painting videos to come as well as um, you know some lure building videos. So, And like I said, this is one of my favorite fly patterns as well as colors to, flow, to throw for these shallow water redfish here in North Carolina. Um, it do, it does, they, don't, they don't get super picky, but this breakdown of a fly, something that lands soft, has a lot of movement, but not too much movement. Uh, has a decent amount of color, but not too much color. And it kind of matches the hatch a little bit, it seems to do the best. So, like I said, hope you can be successful with it out on the water. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you have any questions, and definitely press that like button. Um, it definitely helps out and I look forward to making some more videos for y'all and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.